Okay, for those of you who are still watching, you better not be watching, Chad. Here are a few tricks and a few gadgets that'll improve your production quality. The first thing is lighting. Have your light shine on you. If it's behind you, whether it be sunlight or lamps in the room, it's gonna give you the look of a shadowy figure who's about to expose someone or expose themselves to someone. That doesn't inspire trust at all. If you've gotta shoot at noontime and you can't wait until dusk, look for the shadow of a building because that way you won't have the sun falling directly on you, creating big shadows under your nose and eyes. If you're working with lighting inside, try to experiment with opening and closing the blinds and turning on various lamps and lights. Sometimes closing the blinds and using all the lights in the room gives you a nice bright shot, but sometimes opening the blinds and having sunlight shine right on your subject also gives you a nice shot. It just depends on the room, the time of day, and the number of lights in that room. The next thing you're gonna wanna consider is composition. The rule of thirds refers to this grid. When your eyes match up with the line a third of the way down, or a third of the way to the left, or to the right, you create visually pleasing shots. You don't have to be exact with this, but it's a really good thing to keep in mind. Also, think of all four edges of your shot like four guillotine blades, and you don't want them to be cutting off anything particularly vital, like the neck. Or the top of your head. Oh my god, my brains! Oh my god, my brains! Because that looks painful. Next up is audio. When I first started shooting, I had no idea how important audio was. Audio is more than 50% of the equation. In fact, if I were Emperor of the Universe, I'd call it Vaudio instead of Video. Case in point, if a tree falls in the middle of your Vaudio, everyone's gonna hear it. Bad audio is way harder to fix than bad video because you can't just lay something on top of it or crop it out. If your audio gets corrupted, it's gone forever. Wow. So try to avoid things that give off a lot of noise like vents or buzzing fluorescent lights or ambulances or people or thunder or water coolers. But if you can't avoid those things, just invest in a lavalier mic or one of these bad boys, which clips on to your shirt and only picks up the sound of your voice. One thing to remember with lavalier mics though, avoid clipping it anywhere where it's gonna scratch against your clothing because that is one of the worst sounds on earth. When you're using a lavalier mic, try to hide as much of the cord as you can. I usually run it underneath my shirt. Hey buddy and then clip it on somewhere around here. It's even easier when you have a collar or a tie or something to work with. Try to hide as much of the microphone as you can, but remember, avoid that <laughs> Last thing about audio, make sure you test your levels or listen to it back after you record something. You'll know it's going too high if it passes zero decibels or into the red zone on the audio meter. You also know because it sounds like this. Okay, next up, let's talk about cameras. Step into my office. If you're interested in upping your production quality, you can buy a camera, rent one, or borrow one from your school. Here are three good options that I've used. The first one is an iPhone. The camera on this is surprisingly good. In fact, the documentary Waiting for Sugar Man, which was nominated for an Oscar, actually shot some of their scenes using an iPhone. If you don't have an iPhone, you might have a friend who does, so this option is usually free. Your second option is a consumer camera like this one. You can go on CNET.com and see what the cheapest model is with the best quality. This costs about 500 bucks, and you can add in an external microphone which plugs into the back for another 50, which will up your sound quality. Your third option is a DSLR camera that can shoot video. With a camera like this, you can get professional quality video for about 600 bucks. Here's where it gets complicated though. With most DSLR cameras, you have to record your audio separately using an audio recorder like this one. Once you record that, you'll have to sync them up in your editing software later on. 
If that sounds like madness in your ears, then go ahead and ignore this part. But if you're interested in pursuing videography, this might be something that's worth checking out. It's actually simpler than it might sound. Here's what my current rig looks like. I've got a DSLR camera, this little $5 contraption to hold it all together that I got on Amazon, audio recorder, a shotgun microphone, and a lavalier mic. So I'm recording two layers of great sound at once and getting awesome video, all for less than $1,000. If you're interested in videography, do some research. This is worth looking into. Once you've decided on a camera, just type the name into YouTube and get some great tutorials on how to start using it. And we'll end on that note. You've got everything you need to make your first video blog. So here's a really easy first step. Pick up your phone, camera, or webcam and introduce yourselves to us. Tell us your name, the college or group or company that you're affiliated with, and your answer to the question, what is the single best idea, innovation, or invention on your campus or in your community that can move this planet forward? Don't overthink it. Don't worry about making your first one perfect. The important thing is that you join one of the fastest growing communities of amateur storytellers online. It could be the first step to something really great. Thank you so much for watching. If you have a few more minutes, check out our other videos here. You better not still be watching, Chad. I had so much faith in you. So much faith.